Here is the world's most normal looking appendix for the reasons we will soon describe. If a uh, surgeon took out a lot of these appendixes or appendices and they looked like this, he would eventually get into trouble because he would be taking out normal appendices. Let's look at the salient features of a normal appendix uh, in its perspective as being a classical, typical example of just about any part of the GI tract. The uh, glandular elements that you see here, uh, not only on the surface, but a little bit in, are uh, mucus secreting cells, and they are simple columnar epithelium. Notice that there's a lot of lymphoid connective tissue uh, between the surface and a deeper uh, epithelium. And in some areas, this lymphoid uh, tissue forms actual follicles or secondary follicles, where you have uh, lighter areas on the inside, the germinal centers, and then darker areas on the other side. Notice that this lymphoid area is actually the majority of the thickness of the appendix itself. And this is all uh, mucosal and submucosal lymphoid tissue. Notice that the uh, lymphoid tissue can in areas come to sort of an abrupt uh, ending in which you could then see uh, perhaps a few small uh, muscle fibers, but the tissue then deep to that is very loose. It's basically loose connective tissue, classical fat like you see here, a lot of veins like you see here, arteries like you see here. This is the classical submucosa. You then have layers of cells which are arranged both circularly, acting like a sphincter with relationship to the longitudinal axis of the organ. And then the, on the outside of that, you have fibers running in the other direction or longitudinal. Circular fibers, nuclei will look spindly. Longitudinal fibers and nuclei will look quite round because they are cut simply at a different geometric plane. Just beyond that is a small layer of loose connective tissue again, and the appendix is clearly uh, intraperitoneal, so you are absolutely allowed to see mesothelial cells like here, and here, and here, and here, and here, where you can see the actual nuclei. These are true mesothelial cells uh, covering the surface peritoneum. You would not call this adventitia, you would call this peritoneum or serosa or visceral peritoneum. You can call this a blood vessel because it is. You can call this uh, muscle fibers cut transversely to their axis. You can cut these muscle fibers cut longitudinal with respect to their axis. You could call all of this loose connective tissue submucosa because it is. You can call all of this lymphoid tissue, primarily mucosal, but sometimes extending well into the submucosa. And uh, you then call, going backwards now, the surface epithelium and the small uh, invaginating glands or pits, if you would like to call them that, the uh, mucosa of the uh, appendix and the intervening cells in the mucosa, chiefly lymphocytes, and some connective tissue cells would be lamina propria. I want to say one more thing. Notice that both the circular as well as longitudinal muscle fibers are nice and clean. What I mean by that is there is no infiltration of inflammatory cells, especially neutrophils, into these muscular layers. And if there were, we could then diagnose acute appendicitis. But I guarantee you, if we drove around this entire appendix, we would never see any significant uh, infiltrate of inflammatory cells. We do, however, see some dilated blood vessels in the serosa, which is quite common, even secondary to surgical manipulation. But there is no infiltration of uh, inflammatory cells into the muscular layers. And uh, I thank you very much.